Today we're going to provide a brief overview of Cribble Logstream. This will include a discussion on the distributed deployment architecture, as well as a demo highlighting a number of the product's key features and functionality. So to start with the architecture diagram, Cribble Logstream can be integrated into your existing technology stack, and it sits between sources and destinations you already have configured in your environment or may look to deploy in the future. Though this is not an exhaustive list, you can see the amount of flexibility within the product as you can send data into Logstream via a number of push and pull data sources, and then apply transformations like reduction, enrichment, and reformatting to your data on the fly. Since Logstream operates in a schema agnostic manner, once data is processed, it can land and reside in any of the configured destinations of your choosing. This is a huge benefit as you are no longer bound to a one-to-one -one relationship between data source and destination. You can now take data being captured via Elastic Beats or Splunk and send it to multiple systems of analysis as well as systems of retention concurrently. Focusing in on the log stream components, the light blue boxes across the middle of your screen denote worker nodes. This is where all of the processing of data is done while the dark blue box it above it represents the leader. Once the Logstream application is deployed on any Linux OS, so that can be a physical or virtual, on-prem or in the cloud environment, a server or a container, all configuration management and monitoring of the worker nodes can be completed centrally via the leader. This light gray box around the worker nodes introduces the concept of worker groups. You can think of this as a virtual cluster of nodes and gives the ability to customize the flow of data for your individual environment. As an example, maybe you have a worker group located in a cloud environment. This gives you the ability to perform transformations and reductions closest to where the data sits and will save you not only on egress charges if you're routing the data to another cloud provider or on-prem, but in addition to the monetary charges, this could also reduce the overall traffic flowing into your system of analysis, and your end users will see an increase in search performance and efficiency. Within the worker nodes, data is processed via routes and pipelines. So if we jump over to the log stream environment, I'll navigate to a specific worker group, and we're looking at the routes page. So routes are made up of three primary components, a filter, a pipeline, and a destination or output. So for this example, we're looking at a route to archive our data. So we've given it that friendly name of archival, so our log stream administrators know what the purpose of the route is. And we set the filter to true. So anything with this blue bar in front of the input field denotes a JavaScript expression to select and route your data. So this example of true simply means that all data being sent through this worker group should be captured and routed via this specific route. Then we're gonna send it down a pipeline called pass through. So we'll look at pipelines a bit more in a minute, but pass through is basically just a, an empty uh, pipeline with no functions. So a way to get your data untouched from point A of the source to point B, the destination. In this case, the destination is S3. So again, just to recap, this route is capturing all data flowing through our worker group and sending it unchanged to S3 as our system of retention. Something important to note is that when data flows through Logstream, it is processed through routes sequentially. So you can think of it as coming in across the top here, and then it will be processed down the number of routes to see where it matches the filter. So in this case, our pan traffic source type has a final flag set to yes. So as we enrich this data and send it out to a system of analysis, that's where the source type pan traffic stops, which means it is not getting archived to S3. If we were interested in archiving that data, we'd simply have to move or reorder these routes. Now pan traffic will be included in this catch-all true filter and a unchanged copy of the log will be sent to S3. And then 
um, another copy of the log will be enriched and sent to the system of analysis. Moving forward, if we take a look at pipelines, we're going to look at a JSON event. So you can see your screen is split into two sides, a left and right panel. Looking at the right panel, this gives us the ability to preview our data as it um, flows through Logstream. So by clicking on Capture New, again, we have that JavaScript expression where we can set a filter and then hit Capture, and it'll pull a, a sample of logs that match the filter. So you can think of this as a sandbox environment. You can see how the functions that you configure and integrate into your pipeline will affect the data before ever writing them to your production environment. So here I have already saved a sample of my JSON formatted data. You can see we're looking at Lambda AWS logs. So we've added this parser function to our pipeline and filtered for that source type specifically. Now, as you can see, these logs are a bit verbose. So we have headers and multi-value headers which contain the same information and underscore raw. We have a series of key value pairs where the value passes null. So in many of cases, these fields won't add value to our operations team. They won't be searched on um, in, in the system of analysis. So if we look over here, we've set the operational mode to reserialize for our underscore raw field. That basically means we're gonna unpackage underscore raw, make some changes to it, and then package it back up. And like we said, this data is written in JSON. So looking down here, fields to remove, we've included multi-value headers dot star. So because it's written in JSON, the dot star includes everything that's nested under multi-value headers. And then we've set a filter expression does not equal null. So that's saying we only want to keep key value pairs where the value does not equal null. So if we click on out, we can see how our logs were changed based on this function in our pipeline. Green being a field we added, orange denoting a change was made, and red are the fields that we've decided to remove. Clicking on basic statistics, you can see with this one simple, one function pipeline, we've reduced the amount of data in underscore raw by about 45%. In addition to um, the parser function for reduction, we also have some other functions built in, such as sampling, suppression, the drop function. There are also built-in functions for enrichment. So maybe you want to do lookups, GOIPs, DNS lookups, or mask your data. And then there's also some functions in our library to transform, maybe turn things into numbers, rename, just to name a few. Another interesting thing we see here is that we've actually created this pipeline in a pack. Packs enable Logstream administrators and developers to pack up and share complex configurations and workflows across multiple worker groups or across organizations. So ultimately, utilizing packs will help you streamline and redeploy um, repeat objects across your log stream environments. One last thing to look at is collectors. So after we send data to our system of retention, what if we need to get it back? In that case, we have functionality called replay enabled within Logstream. Your Logstream administrator will configure a collector. In this case, we have an S3 bucket collector configured. And then we have the ability to run and replay that data back. So you can set, again, a JavaScript expression to narrow down the data you want to bring back. Maybe set a time frame. And when we have it in preview mode, it's bringing the data back just so we can see it in the GUI itself. So maybe you just need to take a screenshot, 
provide some evidence for audit, and then you're done with the data. However, in some cases, you'll need to totally bring that data back. Maybe there was an outage, you're doing a post-mortem and trying to figure out the cause of an issue. If that's the case, you can select full run and that will send your data back through Logstream. It will be processed by your routes and pipelines and into your system of analysis for further investigation. We hope this overview has been beneficial and you're leaving with more information about how Cribble Logstream can provide operational efficiencies in your organization.